Um, hello world and true believers. This is Brenda, a lost Aspie girl. And you know, I've been thinking and I, cause I've been saying it for a while and I always mention to you guys how like a lot of the things that I say is like a quote from various different things, movies, cartoons, comic books, all kinds of stuff. And if you guys ever wonder why I say hello world and true believers, hello world is actually from Android. And if anybody's ever um, tried to make a starter app, like one of the first ones is to make Hello World. And I always thought that was kind of <laughs> hilarious. And the the true believers is Stan Lee. And um, if anybody reads comic books, um, anything written by Stan Lee, it starts out with Hello True Believers. But he also used to do that for Saturday morning cartoons. Like I remember when I was a kid and I used to watch... Um, Spider-Man and his amazing friends, <laughs> and it would start with like, um, hello to believers, you know, little, and then and that was his introduction. Um, another one I always like to do is like from G.I. Joe, well, if I say something to someone, I'll be like, now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Go Joe. <laughs> um, so there's that. But today, this, this, today's video I actually want to make is, um, I realized that the videos that I made yesterday on executive dysfunction were rather tangential and I digressed a lot and they were kind of all over the place with my cluttering and all kinds of stuff and I wanted to make a like a try to make a shorter video kind of s summarizing like a like more of like a synopsis of what I was trying to say yesterday and I was thinking about this today uh, about what I want to say um, and like I, I mentioned two of my jobs that I had yesterday. One, towards the beginning of my biotech career, which was at a startup company. And also, um, my my last job, my last job in my career, which was at a more corporate-based company. And like, and what I wanted to say is like, I feel like the, the juxtaposition of these two different positions, like these two, well, not even positions, but because I had multiple positions at both company. But, um, but how, how my, um, my performance at both companies will tell you something I feel about executive functioning and about executive dysfunction and how it can be both a detriment and as well as a benefit. Because um, when I worked at that startup company, they realized I was really good with systems and system anal system analysts and I was do gap analyses and look for discrepancies and I was really good with problem resolution, finding creative fixes for, for a lot of their processes, especially because they didn't have a lot of processes in place because um, a lot of stuff was still in clinical development. And um, and they kind of just let me go. They actually made a position for me. I got three promotions in three years. And I've I feel like you know anybody else on the spectrum well, needs to use spectrumites or or um, neural atypicals will understand what I'm saying when I when I say that it's not always it's not about status for us in our job at least it isn't for me and I feel like from other people that I've talked to that are on the spectrum it's more about feeling like what you do has meaning or purpose and that it's about the challenge and uh, and about like affecting beneficial change and what and whatever it is you're doing and feeling like you you know you you've done something that actually means something which is actually you know a huge reason why I make these videos now I'm on the I'm on this journey of like self discovery and I and I um and I like the idea that what I'm learning about myself is 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 potentially helping other people um so like when I was at that first company they kind of you know I I got like I said, promoted in three years, and that wasn't as 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 significant as to me as the fact that every challenge that they gave me, I worked on each project and I put my full focus into it. They allowed me to work my own hours. Sometimes I would go in at like six o'clock in the morning. Sometimes I wouldn't go until eleven. But if I came in at eleven, I worked. You know, I always worked really hard. Sometimes I only worked short days, but I always got all my work done, and I and I put my full into it. Like when I when I when when I'm working on whether it be a research project or trying to fix a problem, like my whole full attention goes into it and that everything else, like I said, falls to the wayside. And, and they let me do that. And the only reason I left there is because I felt like I had, or like I had done everything that I could do for that particular company and I had, um, and I wanted a new challenge. And like, I, I think I kind of got, um, like, I think that that kind of set like a false, um, gave me a false sense of confidence in how well I did there. And the fact that I only had like, while I was working there, you know, I, I, I had been diagnosed with bipolar at that point, And I only had one manic episode while I was there. And it wasn't even that bad. It wasn't anything um, to write home about or whatever. <laughs> like, you want to say, if you want to say that, you know, um, 
and 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 then I had another job between that, and then I I went into a more corporate based company. And it was while I was there where a lot of my problems started happening, you know, because when I'm there, they, they, they don't let you work at your own pace. They want you to multitask. They want you to work on project teams. They want you to run meetings. Um, it, it, it becomes less about problem solving and about the data and, and actually um, accomplishing what it is that you set out and, and more about like doing what it is they tell you to do and not working outside the box, even though they say that they want you to. When, you, you know, like I used to, I went, when I was at that, that that final company, I butt heads with management a lot because I would realize they had, like, they had all these validated systems and they didn't speak to each other and I, and they would always want to blame it on on the people. And I would say, you know, like, they're, these are redundant systems you have. They have to put the same information in like four different databases and then they also have to write it on a piece of paper and you wonder why mistakes are being had and you know but they didn't want to put the money they, they always want to just like I felt like put band-aids on 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 these on these processes and that's making even convoluted more convoluted um, path for people to walk and then they wonder why they're making mistakes but they don't want to look at the systems and they don't want to put money into that so they rather do things like you know change um, cell culture and purification to upstream and downstream because that makes sense Um, (laughs) because that's gonna um, actually make things more effective and efficient (laughs) and um and, and and like so so on there I'm starting to I'm starting to fall apart and you think like I, I stayed there longer than I did at that that company the the bio the initial biotech company that I told you guys about but I think part of it is that first like my confidence was was shot you know and um I was having such a hard time plus it was still a challenge like I kept thinking like if I if I did this if I did that then I would do a better job and I got all these books on like how to work more efficiently, how to problem solve. I kept thinking that if I, um, if I just came at it from a different direction, that it would be okay. And I it would get better. And, um, like I would, I would try to talk to management cause I would like, you know, if everybody else is able to do this, Brenda, you should be able to do this. I'm like, but I, but I'm, I'm having a difficult time and not everybody there obviously knew I had the bipolar. They knew I would go into the hospital sometimes. They didn't know why. So there was also that happening. And and, and that's affecting my confidence because I don't want people thinking, you know, like that I'm not able to work because I'm, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm getting put in the hospital. So it's making me want to work even harder to, to kind of, I feel like I had to doubly prove myself because of this. And um and, 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 and that was stressful in and of itself. And, you know, I'm having all these, like I started doing what at the time I, I called psychomotor edu- um, agitation because I would do this weird thing with my hands where I know now it's, it's self-stimulation, which I guess is a form of psychomotor agitation. I didn't know why I was doing it. I wouldn't even realize I was doing it. And a lot of people would make fun of me for it. They would, um, they would start mimicking me and um during meetings and stuff if I started doing it and the involuntary mutism was happening and um so this is all happening to me this, at this company and you'd think that I would have remembered how well I did at the other company and 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 that would kind of bolster me but it didn't because I was like I, I didn't I didn't understand why I did well there and I'm like why did I do so well there and I and I was able to do, overcome all these things but I come here and I'm not able to and actually when I got my assessment that's one of the things I talked to the neurologist about and she you know explained to me that at that company they probably allowed me to tackle one project at a time I was a lone entity I was able to make my own hours so that's what I'm saying I'm, it's not that like executive function can is actually dysfunction it's just that we function differently like when i was able to make my own hours and work at my own pace and do all like not only did i i worked very fast but it was because i was able to do it my own way and like it's actually interesting this one person wrote to me about his daughter um jordy john he wrote to me about his daughter she's about 13 and how she's a lot very similar to that she has to do things her own way like if she wants to make dinner she has to do she she can't multitask and you know but when she does something she does it thoroughly and she does it well she had her own youtube channel she was she had music videos on there and and so again, it's not about whether or not we're capable of doing these things. It's just the way we approach them. And and, and and the neurotypical, the neurosocial mind is always trying to fit us into their mold. They're always saying, let's do these things step by step. Let's do it this way. Let's tackle it this way. I say that's not the way. 
we don't look at things that way. Stat, like the things that we do are not a means to an end. Like when I decided I started drumming, I didn't go take classes so I could be more social or because I wanted to learn something because it would help me in my job. I wanted to drum because I wanted to drum. Like when I started wanting to dance, I started dancing because I like dancing. Not I didn't go out and do it to meet people. Sometimes I'll actually go to a dance club by myself, right? And I dance in my room. I don't go to do it to meet other people. It's it's something, it's it's, it's for myself. It's, it's not about a means to an end. Like if, if I got like when I got that um, position at the new company, I made twice as amount of money that I made at the old company. But I like I was so much more ha happy at the other company. I, like I I I I, I should have gone back back there. But it, but um but the, that's a whole another long story that we can get into another time. But I think for us, it's not about status. It's not about money. It's about the process. Like I always said, it's the process itself. Is that making us happy in the moment? I don't think we're like other people. We're not always looking back and saying this made us happy before or looking forward and saying if once I have this, once I have this house, once I have this, I'll be happy. We want what we're doing right now to make us happy. And if it's not making us happy, then we're miserable. And, and, and usually the things that make us happy is, is the position giving us a sense of purpose and meaning um um is is what we're doing feeling like we're actually affecting beneficial change is is it challenging us and and the actual things that that we're we're good at doing and um and are we allowed to do it at our own place pace in the and 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 and, and, and thoroughly because a lot of times like you know like one of the problems that i was having definitely especially at my last company was that you know i wanted to do, like i didn't feel like something was finished and they'd be like it's done we don't care we just we just need to close it we need to get it out it's it's, it's done i'm like but it's not done and they just want me to sign it and it would give me like crazy stomach aches because uh, I would get so much anxiety from that and I think for that for us that's that's not what we want we don't want to just have it done so it's done and you know we want to make sure that it's done and it's done thoroughly it's done properly you know um and and and, and, and when we're approaching something approaching something we tackle it like it's, it's about problem resolution not about the step by step like I said it's not a means to an end we're not going I want to get I want to do this so that I can get a promotion so that I can get a boat or so I can get a house so I can get a car. Like those things are, are, are not as significant to us as, as, as what we're doing itself and, and, and whether it has meaning, you know, um, like making my paintings. I've never actually even tried to sell one of my paintings. I've given some to some family members and some friends. I, I'm very emotionally attached to them. I'm not painting so that I can make money from them. I'm painting because the process itself is very cathartic and it, and it, and it, it gives me a sense of meaning for myself and I, I feel like maybe I'm adding beauty to the world and and it also allows me to channel some of my negative energy into something constructive. And also, so like I'm saying, so like I think that people with executive functioning, the way to overcome that is, is to, it, it's about a shift in perspective and not approaching it step by step because I think this goes back to like the whole big picture thing where you know neurosocials neurotypicals try to say that we can't see the big picture that's not true we just need to look at all the pieces first then we can step back and we can see the big picture I think that executive functioning is that way it's not that um I think when we look at things step by step it becomes overwhelming and exhausting to us but if we say hey this is a puzzle this is a game um, we get excited about the process itself, uh, about, you know, like in the morning, if, if I have a hard time taking a shower, the, cause I, cause I, I don't know what it is. Once I start thinking about it, I have a hard time getting in there. But if I distract myself and I think about something during the day that's going to excite me and I realize I can't do that thing until I get into the shower and I distract myself thinking about the excitement for that, bam, I'm in the shower. It's no problem, you know? Um, and, and I just always think, and that was kind of why I started to do that video and I, I deleted it about, um, you know, I rewrote the, the story of the scorpion and the frog and I decided to, to call it the scorpion and the foxy frog and how the foxy frog tricked the scorpion so she wouldn't get stung. And I felt like the scorpion is a metaphor for life. And sometimes life st will sting you, especially us, because of the way, because the dominant mode of thinking in this world is a neurotypical or neurosocial brain. And that's the only reason why we have difficulties is because they keep trying to shove us into these boxes and, and trying to make us do things the way they do things. And that's difficult. And that's why I made a video about mind blindness. And I and I likened it I um, to um, 
I use the analogy of, of colorblindness and that in the world, like there's a social color a spectrum of colors that we're not able to see. And in this world, it's almost like the world is, is set up as a maze of, uh, of, of these social colors. And like someone who's colorblind, if you put them in a maze with all these colors and say, you know, go right down the color, the street that's red and go left down green and then um, up blue street or whatever, they're going to get lost. And that's what happens to us. And then and then we're reprimanded for it. And they keep saying, try harder, try harder. If you just do it like this, you'll get it. And maybe you'll find ways to compensate, but you're still not going to get it right like a good percentage of the time, even if you figure out another way. And And I think if the world, if we were the dominant mode of thinking, we wouldn't struggle as much as we do because we would allow people to work it within their own abilities. And we would actually work to people's strength instead of trying to force them into these into these um into these boxes or down these mazes that 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 actually work against us you know what i mean and i think part of the reason why is because the neurosocials work that way like a lot of times people if they're if they're if they're left to their own devices they'll be lazy because most of the things that they do where's a mean to end and end and end like if they're working in a job they're doing it um it's about ambition it's about status about making more money i think so so the work itself isn't important to them it's just you know if they're going to the gym it's just about losing weight they're not thinking about like for us the process i think a lot of times it's more important than the end goal. And I don't think it's like that for everybody else. And they, and no matter how much we try to explain it to them, they'll never understand that. They won't get that. Um, but, but but we don't have to try to explain to them. We can, we can, we can learn from each other. And so that's why I'm making these videos. If you have executive functioning, there are other ways of just approaching it. Don't try to approach it the way the neural socialists tell you to do. Don't do it step by step. Be foxy and find another way. Like, you know, like if you're having a hard time getting in the shower, distract yourself. If you're having a hard time making those phone calls, you know, make it a game. I think these things will make it much easier for you. The one thing I tell you right now, though, that I think you, because, you know, inspiration, I think excitement, things of that nature, making something a puzzle, a game will inspire us. But the one emotion, the one, the one thing that I'll tell you to avoid using is fear. I know that through most of my childhood, the thing that helped me to overcome my executive functioning was fear. It was fear of my father and um, fear that I was going to get in trouble or punished if I didn't do well. And then later on in my job and stuff was fear of getting fired. And I think when something is fear based, it causes a lot of anxiety. And that's where a lot of those secondary comorbid things, I think, start to, to um, get triggered and come up like depression, anxiety, potentially bipolar or anything else, you know that might be there and uh, lurking in the background. And we have to be careful of that. And I, I think there's also, th that comes up with, a, and I will, I'll get into another video about nutrition deficiencies. But I think that, um, again, like the way we approach things is just as significant of, as what we do. And I think that if we use the neurotypical, the neurosocial means of doing it, it's gonna trip us up. So I think we have to find another way. It will be unconventional, but that's okay. Cause that's not the point, okay? Um, so I hope that helps you guys. Um, let me know. And, and, and you know, if, if you guys have any, if you have executive functioning problems and you've had some creative ways of overcoming yours, please let me know because I would like to, I'll try to make a video about that. Or if you're having any struggles, particular struggles that, you know, you'd like me to talk about. I'm not an expert at these, you know, I just do my own research and everything like that, but I will try to help you as much as possible. I'll try to look it up and everything like that and um, potentially make a video. Because I think the executive function is, is, is a big tackle that needs to be issued, um, um, big issue that needs to be tackled. Because um, I think the way the rest of the world, um, I think that's one of the things that gets, uh, uh, um, like makes us less productive than we potentially could in this world. We have a harder time con contributing because of that. And I think that we can overcome it if, if, if we approach things in a very specific, in our own convention, unconventional manner. Okay, I'm cluttering a little bit and getting, <laughs> um, and going a little bit crazy. So I'm gonna stop this now, and I hopefully that will that helps you guys. Um, let me know. Okay, toodles. Bye.